Hello everybody, and welcome back. Today we're talking about drug discovery. Nope, not quite those kinds of drugs. When we say drug discovery, we mean the process of finding and developing drugs to target specific processes in the body. Today, we will be focusing on the drug gabapentin. Gabapentin was developed in 1993 using the structure of GABA, a naturally occurring neurotransmitter, and making modifications to produce the desired pharmacological effect. Gabapentin was developed as an anticonvulsant, which means it's used to treat seizures. It inhibits the uncontrollable firing of neurons, relieving the seizure symptoms. However, since its FDA approval, gabapentin has also been used as an off-label drug for other diseases. One of these diseases is neuropathic pain. Neuropathic pain is any pain caused by the damage or disease of the somatosensory nervous system. The neurons become damaged, making them more sensitive to signals such as pain. Neuropathic pain can be caused by many different conditions. These include postherpetic neuralgia, caused by shingles, diabetic neuropathy, caused by diabetes, and cancer-related neuropathy, caused by side effects from chemotherapeutic drugs. Recently, gabapentin was actually approved by the FDA in the treatment of postherpetic neuralgia, but still remains off-label for all other forms of neuropathic pain. Gabapentin targets neuropathic pain by overall decreasing the firing of neurons. That's right, neuron. You're not fired today. In fact, you're on fire. Good job. Anyways, gabapentin causes this effect through several mechanisms, the first of which has to do with the chemical synapse. In a normal synapse, calcium enters the presynaptic cell through voltage-sensitive calcium channels. The entrance of calcium allows vesicles in the cell to bind with the cell membrane, releasing neurotransmitters into the cleft. These neurotransmitters interact with receptors on the postsynaptic cell, allowing the signal to propagate. Gabapentin binds to a subunit on the calcium channels, preventing calcium from entering the cell. When this action is inhibited, vesicles are unable to bind to the membrane, preventing propagation of the signal. Sorry, dude. The second mechanism of gabapentin involves activating the adenosine A1 receptors on the postsynaptic cell. This activation causes several changes, eventually resulting in an effect on the ion channels. Calcium channels close, decreasing the inflow of calcium ions, and potassium channels open, increasing the outflow of potassium ions. This causes hyperpolarization, as the exterior of the cell becomes more positive in charge. Overall, the membrane potential becomes more negative, meaning a larger stimulus is required to reach the threshold and make the neuron fire. Gabapentin also has other mechanisms, such as the inhibition of the NMDA receptor and the increase of GABA and glutamate concentrations. Both of these also contribute to the effect of decreased neuronal firing. Through these mechanisms, gabapentin has been shown to be effective in the treatment of both cancer-related and diabetic neuropathy. Although it does not cure the disease, studies have shown that it effectively decreases pain, providing symptomatic relief. However, the use of gabapentin comes along with several side effects. These include dizziness, tiredness, drowsiness, and weakness. Gabapentin may also have an effect on neural plasticity, possibly inhibiting the creation of new synapses. Use of any heavy machinery, such as driving a car, is not suggested while on gabapentin because of all of these side effects. Sorry, McQueen. Finally, it's important to keep in mind that although gabapentin shows great promise in treating neuropathic pain, it is still not FDA approved and therefore taking the drug still remains risky. And there you have it. Now you know a little something about gabapentin and its off-label use for neuropathic pain. We hope you enjoyed the video and learned something about the process of drug discovery. See you next time.